Hello everybody and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer and today we're going to be analyzing Broadcom stock, uh, ticker AVGO. Uh, I've had this request came in a little while ago um, on YouTube and then I recently had a Cyclical Investors Club a full service member ask me about it so I bumped this one to the top for them. Um, I haven't traditionally actually tracked Broadcom because I've always put it in the two hard categories so we're going to get into kind of why that is. Um, if you have a request that you'd like me to take a look at on the channel, just put it down in the comment section. I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me and eventually I'll make a video. Um, if it's a stock that's in the S&P 500, I post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post over on Patreon. Uh, and at the $5 a month tier level, you can request any stock you want and I'll make a video of it. Um, as long as it uses, uh, you know, the main strategies that I talk about here on the YouTube channel, I have a couple that are exclusive to the full service, but usually I'll still tell you, you know, what I think about a stock. I might just not get into the details of those kind of exclusive strategies, my growth strategy, re strategy and so forth. Um, I also have a 25% off, uh, affiliate link for fast graphs, which you'll see me use in this video down in the description. And I think with that, and I also have a direct link to the full cyclical investors club service on Seeking Alpha as well. Okay. As always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. And for Broadcom, I have pretty much put this in the too hard category for ever. I recently, after this request, I sat down and I was like, you know, if I was going to do my best or whatever to try to figure out a decent place to buy this stock you know what would I do is there any way I could kind of figure it out so I came up with with something that I'm going to use here but it's and it's based on some techniques that I've used with other stocks but it's not um it's not an easy one necessarily with my normal techniques so it's a semiconductor stock um typically those are very cyclical you can see that there isn't very much evidence in the adjusted earnings of typical semiconductor cyclicality but we also don't have data that goes back before 2010 um to the last kind of real recession that we had and if we look at basic earnings uh, we can see much more cyclicality that's probably a little bit more true to what their real cyclicality has been and they had some big m a around this kind of time period here i think it was in 2018 i, for, I forgot which companies combined together now that i'm thinking about it um, but two big semiconductors um, there was a big m a deal and usually I avoid stocks for like three or four years after that happened. So that was another thing that kind of just pushed it off. I said, eh, I got enough semiconductors that I feel more confident about picking the places to buy them. And I've done well with those. So with the M&A, the short history, I just kind of put this one in the too hard category. But today I'm going to try to do my best to kind of explain how I would go about it. Trying to find a good price to buy the stock other than just like momentum. I mean, right now this is a momentum theme along with a lot of other semiconductors, a secular growth thing. So other than just looking at like technicals or whatever, here is the way I'm gonna go about doing it. I have a technique I call, call using a, what I call a recession PE, which is a PE that I created um, to help with kind of moderately cyclical businesses that have deeply cyclical stock prices so we can see it in 2020 here where earnings grew four percent but the stock price fell mm, this isn't going to be peak to trough but over 40 percent probably close to 45 percent in march of 2020 now this was a weird crash we all get that but um the stock price was very disconnected from earnings, even if earnings fell like 20%, right? If we didn't have that quick recovery, uh, the stock price would have fallen more than double that, right? So we know the cyclicality potential is there. We see it again here, earnings rose 34%, and even the next year they're rising another 12, but the stock price fell close to 40% again. So we see evidence of the deep stock price cyclicality, I would say. Um, with moderate, pro well, in a real recession, probably moderate um, earning cyclicality. And if we use basic earnings, we can see that, they're, that that's probably true as well. So the way I do this is I take the peak earnings and I look at the low price during a drawdown. So we have $155 is where 
they bottomed in 2020, the stock price. And then I used the previous peak earnings because we didn't know at that time what earnings in 2020 were actually going to be of $21.29 and I create a PE out of that. Uh, when I do that, I get a PE of 9.24. Okay, that's a recession PE. That's kind of like a, even though 2020 wasn't a deep recession, so this is probably a little optimistic, but at the same time, we have secular growth trends to kind of balance out that optimism, I think. Um, so we have a 9.24 PE, recession PE. And what I do is I add 40% to that because this is kind of the most pessimistic and then I just want to get kind of close to that. I'm not really trying to pick the bottom. I just want to buy at a decent price um, that's close to a bottom because if you try to go too low, you might not you'll, you might miss out on too many opportunities. Um, so that's kind of a way to just kind of get a rough estimate of a decent point where you can get a margin of safety during a downturn. Um, right now, the PE is about 30, so considerably higher than that. And so what I want to do is I want to take the current earnings. These are going to be forward earnings, so they could come down. If I wanted to ever be more conservative, I could use 42.25 that we actually know what those earnings are. And if these earnings this year did fall below 42.25, I would just use that 42.25 as my peak earnings and that wouldn't change. Um, in order to create um, a buy price. So what I want to know is if they earn $47.05 this year, at what point would they hit that 12 uh, 94, about a 13 PE basically? Like how far would the stock price have to drop? There is a small adjustment for um, some debt. So I, I take uh, the market cap and total enterprise value and figure out the difference between those, which is about 9% and then I add that to the stock price. So I have a small adjustment for that. Um, if it doesn't look like this, these numbers add up, that's probably why. Um, so the, the real price is 1,407. I'm treating it like it's 1,533 um, for the purposes of the valuation. So basically what we wanna know is, what's it gonna take if earnings are locked in at 47 um, to go from a 30 PE down to a 13 PE? And in order for that to happen, the stock price needs to fall about 60% down to $558.38. Now, that might sound like a lot, but we've already seen, we haven't had a real recession yet. I mean, we bounced immediately back in 2020. So what did I say? That was down 45% then, right? It's very easy to see if you had, and then 40% or something, maybe it was even more than that. Yeah, we'll call it 40 from peak to trough. Um, about 40% in 2022, and there wasn't even a recession, right? So you can imagine if there's a recession, the stock could easily fall. And those fell off PEs of 15 and 22. And right now the PE is 31, using forward earnings like 30. So that it's much more optimism priced into this stock than there was during those down drawdowns, which is actually what I base this on. Um, I think it could easily fall 60% if there was a real recession and earnings went negative one year. Now, when that happens, I have no idea and I don't even know whether it will happen, but the way I like to do these things is if it does happen, I wanna be prepared. So I have this one in my spreadsheet now and usually I just, I mean, I update these on a regular basis, but it's kind of surprising. I mean, how many stocks are 60% above my buy prices that get very close or hit them? Um, when cer certain circumstances arise where people thought it was like impossible. So that would be my, you know, value approach for Broadcom for trying to buy it with a margin of safety. Obviously right now, um, you know, momentum is telling you the real near-term trajectory and it's really hard to know, you know, when there will ever be like a significant downturn. But that that's kind of how I so a person could take that approach too, but that's not really how I do things. Um, I'm trying to buy during if it's cyclical, I want to buy it during a downturn and not near the peak. That's just my bottom line. Period. End of story. Um, but that doesn't mean people can't make money during the rest of the time. It's just that it's very hard sometimes to keep that money because semiconductor stocks can fall 
well, look, we saw Micron, we saw AMD fall 65% when there wasn't even a recession in 2022. So and I, I bought those. So you get opportunities, um, but you do kind of have to be patient. And, I, and I've done well on those. Um, but you do have to be patient. And there's not like a perfect way to kind of do it. You just want to, you know, try to get the lowest price you can that has a reasonable chance to hit. And if you follow enough stocks and, you know, you get enough opportunities now, if time goes on and you don't get enough opportunities, then maybe you need to, maybe I would need to lighten up a little bit and come in a little bit sooner. You just have to be careful doing that because over a long bull run like we've had, it's similar to like the late nineties where, you know, a lot of people just don't know what it's like to lose 80% in a bunch of their stocks in two years. Right. And so they, they don't think it, they don't understand that it's even possible sometimes. Um, and so I do understand that it's possible and I like to be the one that's buying <laughs> after that and not the one buying it, you know, beforehand. So that's my thoughts on Broadcom. Uh, if you found this useful, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. If you have a request, put it in the comment section. I'll see everybody later.